New York State, the Empire State, a place of dreams. But in 2024, a shadow falls across its bustling streets. A crisis is unfolding. More and more people are losing their homes. They have nowhere to go. The numbers are staggering. Over 227,000 people in New York State are experiencing homelessness. That's more people than live in the entire city of Rochester. Families, children, veterans, all struggling to survive. This isn't just a problem for big cities like New York City. It's happening in Albany, in Syracuse, in Buffalo. All across the state, people are hurting, and the situation is getting worse. Who are the homeless? They are our neighbors, our friends. They are families who lost their jobs and couldn't afford rent. They are veterans struggling with trauma. They are young people who aged out of the foster care system. Many homeless people are children. Imagine trying to learn and grow up without a safe place to sleep at night. That's the reality for thousands of kids in New York State. The crisis disproportionately affects Black and Hispanic New Yorkers. They are far more likely to experience homelessness than their white counterparts. Why? That's a question we need to ask. New York City, the city that never sleeps, a place of dazzling wealth and glamour. But it's also a city of stark contrasts. While some live in luxury, others struggle to survive on the streets. The city spends billions of dollars on homeless services. Yet the problem persists. Why? Is it a lack of affordable housing, mental health support, job training? The answers are complex. Mayor Eric Adams has promised to address the crisis. He's proposed clearing encampments and providing more shelter beds. But is that enough? The numbers are alarming. In New York State, over 227,000 people experience homelessness every single day. That's like emptying out every seat in Yankee Stadium, and then some. For every 10,000 people in New York, 118 of them are homeless. That's a lot of people without a safe place to sleep, eat, or call home. Over 92,000 people rely on the shelter system each night. Imagine entire families, including over 33,000 children living in shelters. And that's not even counting the thousands more who are seeking asylum or have recently arrived in our country. These numbers only tell part of the story. Because for every person in a shelter, there are others who are forced to sleep on the streets, in parks, or in subway stations. They are the hidden faces of homelessness. Imagine being a child without a home, no place to feel safe, no place to do your homework, no place to just be a kid. That's the reality for over 15,000 children in New York State. These children are forced to sleep on the streets, in cars, or in crowded shelters. They often go hungry, and they miss out on school and other opportunities that most kids take for granted. Even more heartbreaking, nearly 11,000 students in New York State don't have a regular place to sleep at night. How can we expect these children to succeed in school when they don't even have a bed to sleep in? Childhood homelessness can have long-lasting effects. These children are more likely to drop out of school, experience health problems, and end up homeless again as adults. We must do better for our kids. The homeless crisis isn't just a New York City problem. It's affecting cities and towns across the entire state. From Albany to Buffalo, people are struggling to find affordable housing. In Albany, over 10,000 people are experiencing homelessness. That's more than 3% of the city's population. And in Syracuse, the number of homeless individuals has increased by a staggering 30% in just the past year. Rochester, a city known for its beautiful parks and historic architecture, is also grappling with a growing homeless population. Over 14,000 people there are without a home, and the majority of them are families. Even in Buffalo, a city that has experienced a resurgence in recent years, homelessness remains a serious problem. 
Over 17,000 people there are experiencing homelessness, highlighting the widespread nature of this crisis. Many people find themselves trapped in a cycle of homelessness. They may be released from prison, a psychiatric facility, or a nursing home, only to find themselves with nowhere to go. In fact, nearly a third of all homeless individuals in New York State come from institutional settings. This suggests that we need better systems in place to help people transition back into society after leaving these institutions. Young adults are particularly vulnerable to homelessness. Over half of all homeless individuals in New York State are between the ages of 18 and 24. Many of these young people have aged out of the foster care system and have nowhere else to turn. The reasons for homelessness are complex and varied, but one thing is clear. We need to do more to break the cycle of homelessness and provide people with the support they need to get back on their feet. Homelessness isn't just a human tragedy. It's an economic drain. Think about it. Providing shelter, food, and medical care for hundreds of thousands of people costs a lot of money. In New York City alone, the budget for homeless services has skyrocketed. It was $5 billion in 2018. Now, just a few years later, it's a whopping $8 billion, and it's still not enough. Taking care of one homeless family for a year costs taxpayers over $97,000 on average. For a single adult, it's over $51,000. That's more than many people earn in a year. Where does all this money go? It pays for shelters, of course, but also for health care, mental health services, and job training programs. The costs add up quickly. We're spending billions of dollars on homelessness. Yet, the problem seems to be getting worse, not better. Why is that? It's a question that has plagued policymakers and advocates for years. Some argue that the high cost of housing in New York City is a major factor. Others point to the lack of affordable mental health care and addiction treatment. The truth is, there's no easy answer. The Department of Homeless Services, or DHS, is asking for even more money. They say they need an extra $1.5 billion in 2024 just to keep up with the growing need. But will it be enough? It's a tough situation. Taxpayers are already footing a hefty bill. But can we afford not to address this crisis? The human and economic costs of inaction are simply too high. New York City is a city of immense wealth and opportunity. But it's also a city grappling with a severe homelessness crisis that's pushing its resources to the limit. Every night, nearly 90,000 people sleep in shelters across the five boroughs. That's more people than live in many small cities. And it doesn't even include the thousands more living on the streets. The shelters are overcrowded, the staff is overworked, and the city is struggling to keep up with the demand for affordable housing, mental health care, and other essential services. The situation is taking a toll on everyone. Residents are frustrated, businesses are impacted, and most importantly, people experiencing homelessness are suffering. The economic costs of homelessness are significant, but the human costs are immeasurable. Homelessness robs people of their dignity, their hope, and their future. Children who experience homelessness are more likely to suffer from developmental delays, behavioral problems, and chronic illnesses. They often fall behind in school and struggle to form meaningful relationships. Homelessness can also exacerbate mental health issues. Living on the streets is incredibly stressful and traumatic. Many people turn to drugs or alcohol to cope, which only makes their situation worse. We must remember that behind the statistics are real people with real stories. They are our neighbors, our friends, and our fellow human beings, and they deserve our compassion and support. New York City's new mayor, Eric Adams, promised to tackle the homeless crisis head on. 
He's trying a different approach. He wants to get people off the streets and into shelters, even if it means making tough choices. Adams says he wants New Yorkers to be safe. He also wants people experiencing homelessness to have a roof over their heads. He believes shelters are the first step to getting people the help they need, but not everyone agrees with the mayor's plan. Some people say clearing encampments is cruel. They argue that it doesn't address the root causes of homelessness, like the lack of affordable housing. It's a complicated issue with no easy solutions. On one hand, nobody wants to see people living on the streets. On the other hand, simply moving people into shelters without addressing the underlying problems might not be enough. Mayor Adams wasted no time putting his plan into action. He ordered city workers to start clearing homeless encampments across the city. They gave people living there two weeks' notice to move. It was a controversial move. Some people praised the mayor for taking action. Others criticized him for criminalizing homelessness. They argued that people living in encampments often felt safer there than in shelters. The city offered to connect people being displaced from the encampments with services and shelter beds. But many were skeptical. They had been let down by the system before. The clearing of the encampment sparked a debate. Is it compassionate to force people into shelters? Or is it more humane to allow them to live on the streets, even if it means facing danger and hardship? New York City isn't alone in grappling with the challenges of homelessness. Cities across the country are struggling to find solutions. Some have tried approaches similar to Mayor Adams. Los Angeles, Portland, and Washington, D.C. have all implemented bans on homeless encampments in certain areas. These bans have been met with mixed reactions, just like in New York City. Supporters of these bans argue that they are necessary to improve public safety and sanitation. They say that encampments can attract crime and create health hazards. Opponents argue that encampment bans simply push people experiencing homelessness from one area to another without addressing the root causes of the problem. They say that these bans are inhumane and ineffective. The debate over encampment bans reflects the complexities of homelessness. There are no easy answers, and what works in one city may not work in another. So, what's the solution to the homeless crisis? It's a question that has stumped experts for years. There's no magic bullet, but there are things we can do. One thing's for sure, we need more affordable housing. When people can't afford rent, they end up on the streets. Building more low-income housing is crucial. We also need to do a better job of providing mental health care and addiction treatment. Many people experiencing homelessness struggle with these issues, and they need our support. And finally, we need to create more opportunities for people to lift themselves out of poverty. This means investing in job training programs, education, and other initiatives that help people become self-sufficient. Meet Amelia. She's 25 years old and she's been homeless for the past year. Life on the streets is hard. Every day is a struggle, a fight for survival. The first order of business is always finding something to eat. Sometimes she's lucky enough to get a free meal at a soup kitchen. Other times she scours dumpsters for scraps. Hunger is a constant companion. Finding a safe place to sleep is another challenge. Shelters are often full and they can be dangerous. She prefers sleeping outside even if it means braving the elements. During the day, she rides the subway to stay warm and avoid the crowds. The constant motion and noise are overwhelming, but it's better than being out in the open. This is Amelia's life, a life of uncertainty, fear, and hardship. But even in the darkest of times, Amelia clings to hope, hope for a better tomorrow. As night falls, I join the line outside a nearby shelter. It's my best chance for a warm bed and a hot meal. The shelter is often full, especially during the colder months. The shelter worker announces that they're at capacity. My heart sinks. I know what it means to spend a night on the streets. I find a meager bit of shelter under a building awning. The cold seeps into my bones and fear gnaws at my thoughts. As I drift off to a fitful sleep, I dream of a place of my own. Even in the midst of hardship, I find moments of kindness that keep me going. A stranger offering a warm cup of coffee, 
a volunteer at the soup kitchen sharing a smile and a kind word. I discover a drop-in center for the homeless where I can take a shower, do my laundry, and even participate in art therapy sessions. It's a place where I can feel human again. Most importantly, I meet other people who understand my struggles. We share stories, offer each other support, and remind each other that we are not alone. In our shared humanity, I find strength. These small acts of kindness, these moments of connection, give me the will to keep going. They remind me that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope, hope for a brighter future. The city that never sleeps can also feel like the city that never cares. People rush by, oblivious to the struggles of those living on the margins. Their indifference can be as cutting as the winter wind. I see the judgment in their eyes, the fear in their hurried steps. They see me as a problem, a nuisance, a blight on their cityscape. They don't see my humanity. In their eyes, I am invisible, forgotten. Just another statistic in a city grappling with an overwhelming homeless crisis. A crisis that seems to have no end in sight, but I refuse to be defined by my circumstances. I am a fighter, a survivor, and I will not give up hope. I believe that one day I will have a place to call my own again, a place where I can finally rest. Even in despair, I find glimmers of hope in unexpected places. A shared smile with another person, a kind word from a stranger, a helping hand offered without judgment. Their dedication inspires me. I find hope in simple pleasures, the warmth of the sun on my face, the beauty of a sunset. These moments keep me going. They remind me there's always light. I learn that kindness can come from the most unexpected sources. A young woman who offers me a warm blanket on a frigid night, a street vendor who slips me an extra apple, knowing I haven't eaten all day. I encounter the generosity of strangers who despite their own struggles are willing to share what little they have. Their compassion reminds me that there are still good people in the world, people who genuinely care. These acts of kindness, though small, have a profound impact on my spirit. They remind me that I am not invisible, that I am not forgotten. They nourish my soul and give me the strength to face another day. These experiences teach me the true meaning of compassion and the importance of paying it forward. I realize that even in my situation, I have the power to make a difference in the lives of others. New York City, a city of dazzling lights and heartbreaking shadows, a place where unimaginable wealth coexists with grinding poverty, a place of dreams and despair. I witness the city's stark contradictions every day. The opulence of Fifth Avenue stands in stark contrast to the desperation of the streets. The aroma of gourmet coffee shops mingles with the stench of poverty. The city's energy, its vibrancy, can be both exhilarating and isolating. I am surrounded by millions of people, yet I often feel utterly alone, invisible in a city that prides itself on its diversity and inclusivity. The city's contradictions are a constant reminder of the challenges I face, but they also fuel my determination to overcome my circumstances and create a better life for myself. Despite the challenges and hardships, I've discovered a profound sense of community among those who are also experiencing homelessness. We share a common bond, a shared understanding of the struggles of life on the streets. Homelessness does not discriminate. It affects people of all ages, races, and backgrounds. Each person I encounter has a story to tell, a story of hardship, resilience, and hope. These connections forged in the crucible of adversity become a lifeline for me. They provide me with a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose. They remind me that I'm not alone in my struggles. In our shared humanity, I discover a powerful force for change, a force that can challenge perceptions, inspire action, and ultimately create a more just and compassionate society for all. We've journeyed through the heart of New York State, witnessing a growing crisis, homelessness. It's a problem that affects every corner of the state, from the bustling streets of Manhattan to the quiet towns upstate. The numbers are staggering. Over 227,000 people without a place to call home. Families, children, veterans, all struggling to survive on the margins of a society that often turns a blind eye. We've met Amelia, a young woman whose resilience shines through despite the daily hardships she faces. We've seen the strain on city resources, the overcrowded shelters, the endless cycle of poverty and despair. The contrast is jarring. The wealth and opportunity of New York State stand in stark contrast to the desperation and hopelessness that 
too many of its residents experience every day. But amidst the despair, we've also witnessed incredible resilience. The strength of the human spirit shines through in the face of adversity. Amelia's story is just one of many. We've seen the kindness of strangers, the tireless work of volunteers and social workers, the unwavering hope that keeps people going even when times are tough. These stories remind us that even in the darkest of times, humanity prevails. We've seen the power of art, music, and community to offer solace, to inspire change, and to remind us that everyone deserves dignity and respect, regardless of their circumstances. Thus, stories of resilience are a testament to the indomitable human spirit. They remind us that even in the face of overwhelming challenges, there is always hope. Hope for a better tomorrow. The homeless crisis is a complex issue with no easy solutions. But that doesn't mean we should turn away. We can all play a part in creating a more just and compassionate society. We need more affordable housing. We need better access to mental health care and addiction treatment. We need to create more opportunities for education, job training, and economic empowerment. But it's not just about policies and programs. It's about changing hearts and minds. It's about seeing the humanity in everyone we meet, regardless of their circumstances. We can all make a difference in our own way. Volunteer at a local shelter. Donate to organizations working to combat homelessness. Educate yourself and others about the issue. Even a simple act of kindness can brighten someone's day and restore their faith in humanity. The homeless crisis is not someone else's problem. It's our collective responsibility to address this issue and create a society where everyone has a safe and stable place to call home. We can't afford to wait any longer. The time for action is now. Let us choose compassion over indifference, action over apathy, and hope over despair. Let us work together to create a New York State where everyone has the opportunity to thrive, where homelessness is not a way of life, but a distant memory. Let us build a future where everyone has a place to call home.